It's not about picking stocks. It's about picking the right portfolio. So Perfect. here's the first question from our macro pro, pro sub, uh, subs, Keith. It says, how do we keep from getting fired by clients when they focus on year to date and not cycle to date? We can only reiterate so many times how narrow the rally is before they consider going to someone who loads up in large cap growths and queues. We have, we have a portfolio of money market, T-bills, consumer staples, utilities, healthcare, gold, gold miners, and silver. That's an interesting question. I'd, I'd, I'd also say, like, how do you get people who are going to a cocaine party not to do cocaine? I mean, it's like there's a lot of different things that you could say here, right? I mean, I get it. Um, just take a step back before I kind of get into that, answering that question specifically. I want to just tell everyone how much we appreciated the, the questions, the quality of the questions. Uh, we get this feedback a lot in terms of, like, in, in, in this morning's early look, I alluded to it, this book called Truth, The Total History of, um, or at least a, a Brief History of Total Bullshit. And, you know, it's really hard. I mean, it's really hard for human beings. Your minds are, are, are wired to be the opposite, right? You have what, what's called a recency bias. You have confirmation bias. And, you know, if your clients are that way, we get it. They're human beings, right? I mean, I, I wouldn't pull them back too, too far. I mean, the most recent financial crisis of March of this year might might trigger a few things in their minds that might matter but you know like when i look at the quality of the questions guys you know we had a lot of high quality questions and uh i just wanted to thank you for that we're going to go through i think are we going to go through 12 of those rooster i think today yeah yeah so we're going to yeah. take our time and so we'll go through you know we'll go through the top 12 that we thought were the most um thoughtful or pertinent you know pertinent can mean different than you know than than anything else right i mean it's it's what it is but just to address what i thought you know, what, what can be, like, the cue, like, we're really starting to, you know, build our own. Like, if you look at the anxiety meter and how much, how wrong, you know, like, that that small, I, I think it's really closer. I thought it was more like, I always use 80-20, and that's my problem because that's wrong. I think it's just inside of 5% of subscribers actually ask the same question. And I was disappointed in that question, which is, and, it you know, again, it's what it is. But the question, was like, to summarize was, are you going to change the process? Like I was like borderline dumbfounded by by that. It wasn't a majority question, but it's like it's it's almost like crazy. Like again, let's go back to the party and say, are you going to change as a as a student athlete, Keith, that you don't do coke? Like what's wrong with you? Everyone at the party is doing coke. If you don't do coke, you're not going to get a girlfriend at the party. Like I mean, so maybe this kind of goes back full circle on answering or try to answer, you know, cycle to date versus year to date. I mean, if you go back and, and you got to train your client, right? I mean, or, or not. Like the fact of the matter is that every client, if you have, and I'm, I'm hoping that there's a one to 3% uh, or less uh, percentage of your clients, you know, if you have a client business that are canceling on you after like two months of, of things going vertical that, that everybody knows. Um, but if that is the case, yeah, I would I would tell them on the way out. Look, thank you very much. You've been a great client. You know, look, a lot of people know that run client businesses. Some of the dumbest fucking people they've ever met are the people that that are their clients. So let's just be clear, right? I mean, you can't say that to them. I, I understand that. Um, I would never say that. Uh, but <laughs> but the but the fact of the matter the fact of the matter is, like, on their way out, thank them and remind them that when they lose the next 20, 30, 50 percent of their money, like many of the places that they're going to go to did last year, they might be coming back and that you're going to keep the door open because, uh, cause you're a good person. Right. I, that's the way I would deal with it. Cause I would warn them like with anything that you can, that they're going to make the most disastrous mistake at the most precise time and clock time that they could make. Right. So that's, um, that's what I'd say. I mean, it's always about cycle time. I mean, last I checked, you know, my accounts, I, I have plenty of them, um, they don't reset at zero or fully flushed 100% all-time highs on January 1st of every day. I mean, it's just, it's nonsense, right? I, I think it's actually a really sad thing that our business hasn't figured out cycle to date yet. We're the only people with a full investing cycle process, never mind those who talk about real people and real money where their accounts are relative to the life cycle that they built and the wealth, the pile, their pile, as I refer to it, where it's been. So that, to me, 
that's a huge, as opposed to how the question was asked, I think it's a huge marketing opportunity. I think that you have an opportunity here to say, wow, you know, like of all the evolution that's already starting to happen through the lens of the Hedge Eye process, this is the moment in time. You, If you are one of the few people that are thinking about canceling, we're seeing other people, you know, really do the opposite of that and come in here and say, this is the time where, and by the way, we have a long history of this, a long 15 year history of people getting upset that are subscribers right at the spot that they should be doing the opposite. You know, if there's one thing that's happened in Hedge Eye history, I get that. What we what we do have, though, unfortunately, is that, or fortunately, I should say, but, you know, like, we have uh, some subscribers who have only been with us for one year or for three years, right? So they only know investing, like, across the lens of the pandemic. I mean, that's not investing. That's a bubble. That is a, the mother of all bubbles that has imploded systematically at different points in time. The same clients that could have fired you for not chasing crypto in April, ask them that. You know, like, why didn't you, like, it, we didn't have you in energy. We didn't have you chasing crypto. We didn't have you in uh, private equity it, it, you know, during this most recent markdown that you're going to see in the next two quarters. Like, our product and our, and, and our process is, starts with preserving and protecting capital. It's not called hedge eye. It's called hedge eye risk management. Not hedge eye do cocaine and buy cues when everybody else is having FOMO. Like that's, <laughs> it's, it's, I'm trying to be empathetic, but at the same time, be firm. I mean, I think that that is what it's always been in America. It's a uni- uniquely American phenomenon. Don't forget that like many family offices and pension funds will be asking us the opposite. They're, they're entirely more interested. They're like, hey, look, we always have an asset allocation to U.S. equities. We're really interested in going, you know, get we miss Japan. Um, you know, we, what's what's up with India? Uh, why do you like gold? You know, they're looking at these recent gains as an opportunity to reallocate, which is exactly what you should be doing after a rally like this. Uh, which, if I don't say so myself, I might add, was highly stimulated yesterday by options expiration and somebody or some group of people with a big agenda to to get you know 4,400 spy contracts and then even try 40 4450s which is where all the pin action was, to print. And, then, and we've seen this multiple times. We saw it in, at the end of January. You know, we saw it at the end of, uh, or in the beginning of November of 2021. And it is behavioral in the sense that you can remind clients at particular points in time um, and, and get the chart out and show with a circle every single time that they could have canceled on you and made quite literally the worst mistake they could have ever made. So thank you for question number one. Awesome, awesome. Um, switching over this other one, you've touched on this as well before, Keith. Um, interesting because it also involves family offices, which is my background originally. But it says, when a hedge fund institution or big family office start initiating a long position, how do they buy in? Do they buy all in one shot? Do they buy a, a certain amount daily? What is the average normal process? Are there are, are there laws around how much they are able to buy and sell an asset? Um, you know, he's using the example of EWJ volume looks steady over the past three months. Um, with some big volume days helping the price go up. We still have eyeball premiums and a favorable macro, a macro setup. And so he just wants to know what the big allocators buy into a, want to know how the big allocators buy into a long position. Um, thank you for everything. Well, first, I mean, just on that, I mean, volume, when you look at volume on an ETF, it's not the same as looking volume at the uh, relationship between price volume and volatility on a single stock, right? So when... When, when you're buying an ETF that represents the underlying, the volume doesn't make the, the price go up. The underlying went up, and therefore the price went up. You know, so they match whatever demand is with printing, quite literally, the ETF provider printing the volume. So it's, let's just level set with that. It's not because I want to get if there is a question in the queue. And, and by the way, I, I generally heard about the quality of the questions uh, from everyone, which they're very happy with the quality of the questions, the sophistication of it, the understanding, the embedded understanding of the process. But um, I didn't actually read them because I don't want to know what the questions are. Um, so, you know, so there's that. Let's, let's just Because we get a lot of people who say, well, I can't buy JPXN because of the volume. Well, that's not going to, you know, a big buyer is not going to change the price. It's going to change the volume, right? So if it was buying like, uh, Croc sandals 
or whatever, that would change the, it would materially change the price if it's there like 25% of the volume. So back to kind of like the multi-part question. You know, what's typical of a large institution is that they'll limit themselves at max being 10% of the daily volume on a, on a security, less so if it's on an ETF, because, you know, for the dynamics that I just explained, or the mechanics that I just explained. Um, so there's that, you know, so you know, they'll, they'll be, you know, 10% of the volume, they'll have their trade. Hello, Keith. Wouldn't care if I said so. Okay, we lost you for yeah, a minute. You you're, you're you're back. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. Um, so what what did you hear last? Ten uh, percent of the volume, less than ten percent. Ten percent of the volume. Yeah. So less than ten percent of the volume, or they'll tell their trader, that, and or they'll tell the trader to be at the VWAP, which is a volume weighted average price uh, throughout that day for the period that they have to accumulate. Uh, the stock. That's generally for stocks. Uh, again, ETFs, the dynamics and mechanics are different because, um, again, the volume isn't the same relative to the price reaction. So, again, if T. Rowe Price came in and said, look, I want to buy, you know, 25 percent of, of, of uh, whatever stock, that stock's going to go up the moon, especially if, if the street hears that T. Rowe wants to buy that kind of piece. So, again, you know, what they'll do is that they'll take their time. So that's why it takes in single single stocks, it takes an institution so long, if it's a big one, uh, like T. Rowe or Fidelity or whatever, to, to accumulate a position in as much as it's extremely difficult to get out of one. And that latter point is actually the topic for a very good conversation and why I think, you know, on a different tangent, but all, all within the same thing, because it's all the same thing. If you can't look at it all inside the same thing, you don't know what you're doing, right? So again, you know, the, the reason why we see this mania in options is because there's no liquidity, short-term options, I might add, uh, is because there's no liquidity in single stocks. Like you can't get in and out of small and mid-cap stocks. Uh, you can't actually get in and out of a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, mid to large cap stocks for that matter. So people have to rip around in, in the, in the, um, in the futures and options market uh, to maintain neutral if they're hedge fund or whatever, whatever. Um, hedge funds, you know, on the, on the short side, to use an example, like a hedge fund will very, in, very much infrequently want to be X percentage of the daily volume, like, like in terms of like the, the float, because uh, if they have a problem on a short position, they want to be able to get out of it. So you're going to see that as well. Um, you know, when we start to think more broadly, I think the question there at the beginning, I think it, the implications of it are, 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 are far and wide. Like you can, you'll definitely see a trace. Again, it's not the same trace of price, volume, volatility relationship, particular volume to price. Um, but you will see uh, a material increase in volume if an asset allocator says, wow, I, I want to start to allocate to this and no one had allocated to it prior. So there's this firm called Hedge Eye Risk Management that perpetuates that. <laughs> so if you look at, you know, like when I, when I bought, uh, go back to when we thought that the yield curve was going to, I know I know a lot of people, there's some people, the 5% or less, are like, these guys don't know what they're doing anymore, change the process so they can be long queues. Uh, by the way, queues, you know, I hadn't shorted. I, I actually think that of all the mistakes I've made in my career, uh, this one was like so far has been very well risk managed from a tactical trading perspective, how I sized it. But, you know, nobody cares what I did because they just care about themselves, which is fine. But I encourage you to get better on what you fucked up as opposed to what I did, right? I mean, I've made plenty of fuck ups and I'm, a, I'm accountable to all of them. But if I, you know, like, it's like yesterday on the open, I covered IWM. I didn't short it. I wasn't, you know, short it today, you know, uh, in terms of adding to the position again. I know how to trade around my positions. You get 100% transparency on that. No, I don't get everything right. But it is especially annoying when you get something very wrong, when you're not doing what I do, um, that, that you want to ask me about the process. I mean, the process is the process, right? I mean, on the open yesterday, all I was doing was covering, you know, like, and, and now I'm going to start to go back to where I was actually at the end of January, for those of you that remember, the last time you had volume up or you had S&P up, VIX up was uh, February the 2nd. I went to 28 shorts. I'm not, I, I, I could double the, the amount of shorts in, in real-time alerts, and I will uh, coming out of today, I bet. And, and that's what it is. Um, so, so anyway, I digress. There's a lot to think about there, um, you know, when it comes to the relationships and whatnot. But again, when we bought, when we were bearish on, uh, when we thought that the yield curve was going to uh, steepen, we bought Nancy Davis's Eyeball product. Many of you uh, who've been with us for more than three years would know that. Um, and you know the the AUM, her AUM tripled. I mean, like, what? So when we get people to think about the game differently, and this now I'm combining questions one and two, 
you're really starting to tell your clients, I am really doing a lot of work. My process isn't 60 40. I'm not some spy monkey or cues monkey. Like, let's get serious. Your money's serious. You know, if you, if you, if you, if you can't communicate or sell it, then you shouldn't be in this business. You know, if you can't sell your product, you don't deserve assets under management, right? Um, so <laughs> that, that's what you should do is say, hey, look, you know, nobody added four equity allocations to Japan. Nobody's adding, you know, what these guys add and subtract. At a bare minimum, if you have a portfolio, it's asymmetric and anti-beta to what everybody's chasing, I mean, it, which is another objective of a lot of asset allocators and asset management firms. Awesome. Well said. Ryan, you want to ask the third? Or you want me to go? And I got one go. teed up. Go. Go. Okay. Um, Keith, this kind of follows on, right? We've got a continuing theme here. Um, for number eight, uh, well, this is number eight in the queue. Um, if the signal trumps the quads and the analyst views, then what is the value of the quad slash analyst view? Position sizing question mark. For example, if the signal plus the quad plus the analyst all align, then should we be going bigger in size? Yes. I mean, uh, yeah, the, those would be the uh, what we call our best ideas, you know. So, yeah, if you have, you know, the quad, you can have a you can have uh, an analyst who goes anti quad on us, but we generally don't, you know, we don't we don't want that. Um, if it happens, it happens. The analyst can be right in a different quad. So, for example, um, you know, Microsoft should have slowed, and Nvidia, like traditionally, exits AI bubble. And again, on AI is the topic. It may or may not be correct. I mean, I would substitute blockchain for that. You can remind your clients uh, or yourself, for that matter, all the fancy stuff that you owned in 2021 that was related to blockchain, and you can tell me what the return is, full cycle return is on that, right? So what happens from here on AI may or may not be true, right? So when we when we, when we start to think about that, um, if you if you just think about Microsoft, Microsoft was a great short. And then all of a sudden, yeah, you because know, they're, if you think about the analysts, load two quarters in a row, the CEO didn't know where demand was, we nailed it. Then all of a sudden, AI comes out of nowhere, and they show an acceleration. That is 100% the way that it should have played out. If you show a pod one, analyst says it's pod one acceleration, and it is still plot four where Microsoft, by the way, Microsoft, some of these large caps actually do okay. Uh, in quad four as a back test. Now people go, oh, just stop it, okay? I'm trying to help, okay? I'm not perfect, but neither are you. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that if you show an acceleration, a pod one acceleration in quad four, that's called alpha. And that's exactly what Microsoft did. It's exactly what my signal did, by the way. And it's exactly what my signal is AI, and it sniffed these things out without me knowing, because I don't know. Like, I mean, if all of you that knew or wanted to have known that at the lows of the banking crisis in March when I was walking around in the Bahamas on the phone talking you through it or off the ledge for that matter when everybody wanted to be long anything but cues, um, you know, that's, that's, that, 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 this stuff happened, right? We go through this whole thing and that's the point. Um, so again, to review, what I prefer, the best shorts are things that are in quad four, they back test as negative, the signal is negative and the analyst is negative and turn that around on the other side. So that's why Japan, for example, I don't have an analyst on it, but in quad one is where small cap and value work, okay? So when the U.S., if and when the U.S. You know, comes out of quad four and actually stayed in quad one, we actually have the U.S. going more decisively into stagflation quad three by Q1 of 2024, by the way. Um, but again, Japan's got all that stuff. If I had an analyst who was long Japanese small cap value, that would be you do like you would like that person much more than you like the idea of chasing Nvidia up here. Okay, so um, you know just FYI on that. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you got one? Here. So you say that short and hold generally isn't a good idea. Could you please explain some more about your thinking? Is there a case for holding core short positions in a long short book? If so, could you chat about selecting the sizing positions? Uh, that is the question. Yeah, I mean, so short and hold, what I mean by that is that doesn't mean I don't um, hold my minimums on my course, right? So my core positions, so when you have a, it's easier to draw this up, but again, take a piece of paper, put L on one side of the paper, S on the other side of the paper, longs, shorts, write the numbers down, three, two, one, and then two, one, and a half. Three, two, one on, under L, and, uh, and under the, the column uh, 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 S, shorts, two, one and a half. 
Okay, so my max position on my longs, if I'm just looking at a macro long short book right now, is max long is three, medium is two, minimum one, okay? Longs are always in terms of construction bigger than shorts. Shorts, max is two, one, two and a half is generally where, when I say don't short and hold, like when something like IWM went towards the top end of its range three days ago, I took it to two. Yesterday, I took it to a half. Today, I'll take it to one. If it's up again, I'll take it to one and a half. I'll take it back to two. If it goes straight to the top end of my range, I might go straight to two. So I'm moving between a half a percent and 2%. Now that in and of itself should solve for a lot of your problems, if you have your problems, right? Because the number one problem our subscribers have is that they don't know how to build a portfolio. They don't know how to have balance and asymmetry at the same time in the portfolio. So that is a critical thing. If you are the person who are like, he sounds bearish, I'm gonna have a 30% short position in Qs. Like, you're the guy that goes, you know, you have 500 bucks and you go to, to win casino and you're playing $25 chips and in, in an hour you could be done and then you're back at the bank, at the, at the, at the cash machine. You know, that's, that's not how, this is not what we're doing, right? I mean, we've completely evolved the way that people think about their money and are teaching you specifically how to risk manage it. So, Again, the whole point about having a max 2% short position right now is that it really can't hurt you, especially, like, not, it's not going to hurt me. I mean, let's just use an example. If, if, if I was short um, something that went up 10% and it's a 2% short position, I lose 20 basis points of my capital, right? So, again, your macro short book, the only way to do that is if you have as many shorts as I have, right? And that's another thing. Like, I mean... It, you, it, I always talk about this, which is, so now we have the portfolio construction two, one, a half on shorts, but let's have like 25 to 30 shorts. And if you want to run it the way that I do. Now, if you don't want to run it the way that I do, then don't run it the way that I do. You know, it's, uh, it takes, you know, it takes time and effort. If you don't have the time to run it that way, it doesn't mean that you can't be macro aware that way, right? It takes a very, if you say, okay, look, I'm a weekend warrior. I only pay attention to your stuff, you know, but when I have time. Well, okay. I mean, that, that, that's like going to watch, watch the Chicago Bulls. You, you pay attention when you want to go to the game on Saturday night at 8, but there's a lot of work in practice and in between in the off season and across uh, Michael Jordan's full, full athletic cycle career that, that gets him to do what you want him to do. Now, when he doesn't get it done, you, you ask him if he's going to, what if you just went up to him and said, hey, you asshole, you know, fuck you and your rings. You know what? You, are you going to change your process? Like, I'm not Michael Jordan, but it does, like, I hope you guys can empathize a little bit with me when, when I hear that. That's what I think. I mean, um, so when I, when I'm, I'm trying to get you guys there, portfolio construction, very good topic. Thanks for that third question. Definitely. Um, and I know we're coming up in time, but we're going to try to squeeze in one last one. No, 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 no. No, we're going to do it. We're, we'll get, I'll, I'll answer these all day. I mean, I don't, I don't really, I, I really am at the point now where I want to make sure people like understand the moment in clock time, market time that we're in guys. Like this is so critical I mean, it, and we're not hiding and they don't want to hide. You don't want to go be weekend warrior this weekend on the long weekend, go to your golf course and say why you should be one of the, you know, the, the 99% of people that are, are forced to chase tech again. Like you just don't. <laughs> hedge high risk management, hedge high risk management exists today. I've been able to hire these two young men today because we don't lose money when everyone else does. That's it, okay? And we tend to make money over time. In some cases, we make a lot. You know, in Japan, we're making a lot. You know, I don't, I don't have to run around with my hair on fire. You know, I, I just don't. There's no need. I do not need to do cocaine. What's the next question? Okay, next question. And you've touched on it before. Um, Brazil has been in quad two on your sheet for some time for second half of 2023. Is there a significant data point that is excluding it from being a long now? What will be the catalyst to change it to a long allocation? Well, I mean, it's the signal. Yeah, it's always the signal. I mean, so, you know, don't forget that, you know, a big part of the EWZ or the Brazilian index is Petrobras, and it's gone opposite of oil for its own dynamic reasons. So, you know, when somebody looks at that, um, they might not see that, but that's, that's what that is. A uh, big reason why I've stayed away from Brazil it was just that, because it's got a heavy oil exposure and I'm short oil and commodities. Again, no questions, by the way, have to do with all the shorts that we've nailed, right? 
no questions have to do with being, you know, short the end against long the dollar, you know, out of credit, out of commodities. A lot of them have to do with, like, how do we risk manage this one thing? But what you're doing when you sign up for this process is you're understanding everything. You're, you're, you're getting a fine appreciation for the entirety of the global macro market, the singularity embedded therein, all the interconnectedness and how it works. And, um, you know, Brazil is a tough one. I mean, historically, I've had a hard time, you know, staying with Brazil on the long side. There's a, there's a long history for that. If you look at the current quad setup, okay, uh, let's see if it turns out. I'll buy anything. I'll buy Peru. I'll, be, I'll buy, I obviously just bought India. Um, but, you know, Brazil has a long history of really whipping it around. Uh, the other big problem in Brazil right now that really unnerves me, in particular on the, on the, the assumption of quad ones, which are relatively narrow, uh, and, and you should look at slide uh, 20 a lot, like the middle of the slide where it shows the actual growth rates and what's like how much of an acceleration are you actually looking for? Like, for example, quad, I don't know if this is a question, but it should be like, well, what about quad one and Q3 in the U.S.? Well, that's like a nine or 10 basis point assumption. It's not like U.S. GDP growth is going to go up by one or two percent. And so we're talking about like 10 per, 10 basis points, maybe, and it could easily be down 30 to 40. Uh, I'd go with down 30 to 40, actually. Um, so, you know, Brazil, too, you got a lot, you got the currency component, which looks like, you know, really bad. It's, it's not as bad as Argentina. Argentina's currency is down like almost 20% in the last three months alone. But Brazil is a real big problem there. So when your currency goes down that much, 15 to 20%, like it just did in Turkey as well, what happens is that your C on the GDP calculation surprises to the downside because that component, like all components, are calculated on a real basis. So real consumer spending goes down when your currency collapses. And um, that's a main problem that I have with not adding any uh, Latin American exposure in addition to their you know, the commodity factor exposure embedded therein. Keith, and, and one, one final one um, that, we, we, that we have here to ask, and it, you actually just segued perfect into this from the South America component. Um, <coughs> excuse me. This... Uh, this question is coming. Peru and Taiwan, I noticed on the quad map, have favorable, favorable conditions moving forward. Are we just waiting and watching to enter a position? Also, with the dollar strengthening, could we see some downside pressure to our international exposures? Love the Japan or love, love the Korea ad, and enjoying the incremental growth up and down. Yeah. The um, well, um, the let's just uh, tighten that up a little bit. So read the the first part of that question again. Uh, just the first two sentences. I just I, I was picking up on a word, but I had to make the exit here. And <laughs> no, driving. no, no worries. I'm driving. And, <laughs> the multitasking is impressive. Uh, um, so the, yeah. what they really want to know is uh, Peru and Taiwan. They noticed on the quad map have favorable conditions moving forward, and okay, they want yeah, to know yeah, are we just right waiting? There. I got it. Just, just yeah, just stop right there. So favorable favorable conditions is what I heard. Yeah. That's right. Okay, so now. That, it doesn't, um, you know, those don't have favorable conditions. They have favorable conditional probability. Okay, there's a difference. Favorable conditions are what is reported daily. So think of the conditions as opposed to the conditional probability, two different things. Favorable conditions would be the, the, like this week's economic data in Taiwan accelerated. Richie, what did uh, Taiwan's economic data do today? Um. Well, I, I know their new orders uh, decelerated. Uh, yeah, so, so, so the conditions decelerate. So, that's a, so the conditions are the rates of change of economic data. That's the whole point of the process. The conditional probability is basically the base effect. So when you look out at anything on slide, tw go to slide 23. That's where the questions were, and, and they're well placed. So, again, pay a lot of attention to what's the delta on the rate of change. Is it, is it 10 basis points? Or is it 100 to 200 basis points? Yeah, I mean, so we have some subscribers that don't even know what a basis point is, right? Like, those guys are the real ones who are on tilt with cues, but um, they're going to learn. I mean, if you can't learn what a basis point is, you're, that's going to be tough. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, uh, by the way, I think if I queried without them knowing what the question is going to be, uh, like 99 uh, out of 100 Jim Cramer Investing Club members wouldn't be able to answer that question. Uh, but, but, you know, so... But, but so back to, um, or what the yield curve is, or where it is for that matter. But the, so those would be conditions. What's the yield curve doing today? Well, the conditions, uh, the probability of, of, of our conditional factoring just went up that, that the U.S. GDP now cast is correct, right? So the conditional probability is based on the base effect. The base effect is just what happened historically. 
So while it is elegant and everybody loves it, and I mean, I'm talking from, you know, I'm not going to name names, but a guy who runs a trillion dollars to a gal who runs you know, her own family office, which is her own pile, which she made 90 million on her own. Uh, they like it just as much. They like looking at slide 20. They love looking at slide 23 because it's color coded. <laughs> But, but that's just the starting point, right? That's like saying, I like the color green and I'd like to be on the fairway. You know, let's, let's, so, so that's, that's a start, right? You need to know where the fairway is. But you also need to know what the wind is, the rain is, you know, the break on the putts are. You know, those are the conditions that change dynamically, whereas the base effect is much more so like, okay, that's what it is. You know, that, this, this hole on the fairway is the dog leg right. And that's just that's just the start. That's just the start on the whole. You know, um, is that simple enough, guys? No, that's perfect. Yep. Um, we've got okay. one, we've got one last question. I actually I missed this one, um, and this is so this goes and says probably a naive question, but does the old wall have enough firepower where they could take the other side of your trades to make you wrong for an extended time to put you out of business? <laughs> now I'm going out of business. This is great. Um, okay, uh, <laughs> We had to end yeah. it with some spice, like, you know? You know, yeah, to be clear, like, it's like in my, my pile, like, my asset allocation is going up, right? It's not like it's just not going up as fast as, as these people, <laughs> you know, the, the fast to lower highs, I'll be in. You know, like, again, you guys are having a great year to date, right? Uh, where is your pile versus where it was at the end of 20, 2011 that, or 2021? That's all that matters, right? I mean, so, you know, at the expense, at the risk of me not going out of business, which last I checked is, is not going to happen with 100% certainty. Um, what's <laughs> happening in the market today, what, 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 what's happening in the market, and that's actually the, very much the point. For the majority of you who stay with us and are happy with this and understand it, you may not be happy every day with the results, but if you're not, you're violating, like, just read a book, right? Like, it's called Resulting, Annie Duke 101. Like, it, if you're the person that at the blackjack table, and our odds are better than blackjack, and, and our odds are better than anybody who's on Wall Street, I might add, across 24 years. Um, so that's why I'm not out of business. A lot of people have gone out of business because they lose money from points like this in time. They make very bad decisions at particular points in clock time. Uh, I don't. I have never chased a lower high going back 24 years. Never, okay? And they've been lower highs, okay? And I'm the only one that, that publishes his work that could tell you that. There's not one person. So if I sound different, it's because I am. <laughs> Don't. Um, so when you think about that, like I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not going out of business and with 100% certainty. Um, so it's not the old wall that's making that happen. You guys know who it is, right? Like, do I need to tell you? If, if you don't know who it is, or if you're playing poker and you don't know who the sucker is, it's you, right? You, but you know who it is, and you know who he's doing it to. That's not old wall. That is new wall. And that new wall has done this multiple times, okay? And at every one of those lower highs, even in the thing that I have no position in, which is spy, I have made the right decision. Now, we have not known where that lower high is going to be, and this time I'd argue I'd risk managed it far better than I have other lower highs. <laughs> I got crushed at that. Uh, what was it? The, um, I think it was the March, the first rally last year uh, after being bearish was like, you know, that one I got ripped um, like in my account, which is what matters. So everything I'm saying that I've done, you know, within reason, pretty accurately covered my cues, covered my Tesla 180, whatever. Um, you know, I did that. It's not like it's not like fake news. But if you go back to the first time I got squeezed in this bear, in this full investing cycle journey that we've been on, which is, oh, and, and um, I think I lost at least 3% of my capital, which is generally, when I'm losing that much, that means I've really, I had my timing off. But my timing's gotten a lot better because I understand who he is. I understand, and I've incorporated that into who I am. I know what OTD, I, I watch ODT and ask a, a guy that I talk to every day about this, at least electronically, what I'm seeing versus he's seeing a very good friend of mine, um, you know, because I don't, I don't like to disclose this, but I, you know, like I just, I only trust a certain amount of people, but you know, I look at ODTs and six different snapshots throughout the day. I know exactly what this guy's doing, when he's doing it, and it informs my decision making. You can look many, many times. I said, 
I said before the 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 debt ceiling was going to happen, I covered all but one short. Now I know that a lot of people in the five percent of you really just don't remember that, and that and that's fine. It's okay. I would, but it still happened, right? Because what we've understood, or I've come to understand now, is that there's a massive whale in the market that is making a pile. I mean, a pile with his center book. And you just got to understand, no matter what your process is, that it's got to be incorporated into your short-term decision making. Which I would say, that's as good as I can do, fully knowing that. I mean, I can always do better. I get it. There's always going to be a level of unluckiness in this game. Uh, sometimes I've lost due to luck. Sometimes I've lost due, just due to a bad security selection. Uh, sometimes I, I've lost because I've had a bad day. I mean, uh, but the game is being driven by a new component of, of, of new wall that isn't what it used to be Wall Street, which was the sell side. Okay? And this is going to go on and on and on. And what I think it's going to do is it's going to create more booms and crashes than ever before. And that's not a, a wild and exotic thought because that's what it's already created. Like, I don't know how many of you have seen what just happened to uh, even Ethereum. It just went down 25% in, since April. I mean, we're seeing booms and you know, like short intermediate term breakouts and failures. Like, every old wall technician would have said Bitcoin was breaking out mid- mid-April or had already broken out. I mean, that's dead wrong. I mean, everyone would have said that oil broke out wherever they said it last time into the end of last year at some point in the third and fourth quarter dead wrong, right? I don't know how you could say that there's a breakout in high yield credit or, or, or in the Japanese yen, and that would be like even a technician should know that that doesn't, that doesn't compute. But there's like a big game inside of this game, and what I'd like a lot of people not to do is get frustrated with that or assume, you know, well, keep McCullough's got to be able to, to beat this fail because of that person, or he's going to lose his business. Like, this has happened multiple times, going back 19 months, and every single time on my only U.S. In, in, index short, it's been a lower high. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's fine. We understand that the animal spirits are there for cues. But God sakes, people, that it's marketed on, you know, it was during the, the, the NCAA Final Four every day. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's what people do. Uh, it's not what we do. And I think that that's, uh, opposed to me going out of business, I think with all the humility in the world, this is the beginning, the very beginning of us going from making, again, a big difference in many of your lives and in your clients' lives, not in the last three months of a Jews chart. Don't be, don't be silly. This is far more serious. This is about every dollar you've ever made, preserving, protecting it, not having drawdowns. It's not about chasing what everybody has to because they have no other options. When they say, I don't know Japan, uh, well, that tells you all you need to know. It's kind of a big country, right? Um, but it, you know, this is the very beginning of phase two of hedge eye risk management. This is it. We had phase one, which was 15 years. I know in my heart and in my mind, as well as driving down this bloody highway, just ranting about it, that the nature of the feedback questions, compliments, criticisms, tells me that what I've seen for 15 years isn't really well understood by many people at all. And it's not all of you, thank God. But it is certainly people that are on TV today, on my Twitter Contra stream, they don't get one bit of it. And that's why during the next collapse, and I don't mean like collapse and things that are already collapsing, like crypto and and oil, um, that that'll be phase two. And phase two, I think we're probably set up here now to maybe build a big asset management business on the back of it, because the answer is going to be really simple. Add it to more hedge eye products. Definitely, definitely. Very well said. And with that, Keith, that is all the questions that we, we have today. Um, we thank you again for, for joining us um, and for tuning in. We will be back at 9 a.m. on Monday. Stay safe and good luck out there. Hey there, Hedgeye Nation, or if you're not part of Hedgeye Nation, thanks for watching Hedgeye on YouTube. If you haven't already, make sure to click on the button below there. Subscribe to our YouTube page. You can also follow the link in the description to our website to get even more great investing content.